Hey guys, I decided to take a break from my TV projects to do something nice and simple. I realize some of those TVs, uh, the stuff I'm talking about is pretty esoteric. And uh, to be honest, sometimes I get a little frustrated working on them when things don't uh, work out so easily. So um, I thought I would do a nice simple radio project and show you guys from beginning to start how you can restore one of these. I looked around my place and realized I had this little Admiral radio that I've never done anything with. I got it off eBay maybe six months ago, cleaned it up, put it on a bookshelf, and forgot about it. I bought it because I thought it looks nice uh, with the Admiral TVs I have. Uh, it's either Bakelite or plastic, sometimes it's hard to tell on these early 50s radios, but it does have the nice uh, Admiral logo that's, uh, that's the same as on my Bakelite TVs. I've never opened this radio up. I have plugged it in briefly with a dim bulb tester. What that is, it's a 60 or 75 or 100 watt light bulb. You put in series with the plug when you turn the radio on. So in case there is something that shorts out in the radio, the light bulb will soak up the load rather than burning out something uh, irreplaceable inside the radio. Old Goat 64, or maybe it's Old 64 Goat, I forget which, has a great video on dim bulb testers. Um, I'll put a link on the uh, sidebar for this video so you can watch that and see what they're all about. Uh, the performance wasn't great. Um, it'll play for a little while, then it'll fade, and then it'll come back in, and then fade, and so on. So uh, I'm sure there's some parts that need to be replaced inside. On the back here, it's a couple screws, it's a tube chart, and uh, some various information about the controls, warranty, and so on. Underneath is where the actual model number is. So this is an Admiral, model 5R11N, again a tube chart, and so on. And see it's made at Admiral Chicago, or sorry, Admiral Corporation in Chicago. So this is the key thing. Knowing the model number, it's pretty easy to find a schematic online. Um, the, the main place I go to is called nostalgiaair.org. From their main site, you can go into resources. Uh, so here's the home page. From here, if you go into res it says resources, schematics, and manuals. Click on that, and you see a list of all the manufacturers. So I know this is Admiral, so I'll click on that. And now it's a matter of scrolling down and finding this again. Let's see, it's a 5R11, so here we go, 5R11. And what this takes you to is a page where they have links for the schematics. These are all in PDF format, usually they come from riders which was a big compendium of schematics uh, for radios. These are free to download, free to view. Just click on it. They're generally pretty short though. They're not as comprehensive as if you got the original Admiral service manuals. In this case, there's a cover page and then just two pages. So you might want to get um, another schematic from a, there's a service called SAM, SAM's Photo Fact you may have heard of. They're still in business. If you Google for Sam's Photo Fact, P H O T O F A C T. In fact, I might as well do it. See if I can find it. Uh, if you want to order it in hard copy, that can get kind of expensive. But they have an e service where they'll send you a link to the PDF, and that's generally uh, I think like seven bucks. I get a lot of my TV schematics that way when I if I don't have them already in my stash. All right, so Sam's Photo Facts, the second link here, Sam's Technical Publishing, will take you right to the search area. Type in the model number, which I forgot again already, 5R11. And let's see what we got. And bam, there it is. So there I could get this for seven bucks if I wanted to. Um, but I think I can work off of this uh, free publication just fine. 
So I'll bring that back up. The years sometimes these are a little bit vague. This just says pre-1952. Once I pop this open and I see what's inside, I can probably gauge better what uh, what year it's from. So on the first page here, we've got the schematic. Not the clearest thing, but it's not too bad. I already printed it out. I've got it down here. What this radio is is what they call an All-American 5. The name comes from the fact that there's five tubes in the set, and they're series wound, meaning there's no transformer. So here's the AC plug. comes right in, and here's each one of the tubes. They're strung up like a Christmas tree, like a string of uh, Christmas tree lights, I should say with the, all the filaments being in series. So funny, one of these tubes burns out, uh, the radio stops playing. Simple as that. When you work on these, because there's no transformer, um, depending on which way you plug this in, if you use a polarized plug or not, uh, one side or the other is going to be hot, meaning it's the black, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, <laughs> it, it will shock you. Um, Sometimes one of these leads will be soldered directly to the metal chassis. So if you have this plugged in the wrong way and you touch the chassis, you can get shocked. Sometimes the chassis is floating. So like on here, you can see there's a common ground and there's a chassis ground. So in this case, I believe the common ground, which is one side of the AC, is actually separate from the chassis ground, which is just kind of floating. Either way, uh, if you can get your hands on an isolation transformer, uh, well worth it. It, it can protect you. It will protect you from getting shocked. I got mine. I think about 35 bucks used off of eBay. They usually go for between like 25 and and 75 or so, depending on the condition, how many watts it can handle, um, and, and so on. All right, uh, so below the schematic, we have alignment procedures, which I'll talk about later. Quite often, you don't need, need to align it. It's still fine from back when it was originally made. Next page, tube chart, a stringing guide. What this is for is a lot of radios from the uh, 50s. The knob, the tuning knob, was connect connected to the tuning capacitor by uh, a cord with uh, usually some spring tension. If the cord breaks, if you need to replace it, there's you there's usually a guide that uh, you can follow to figure out. This one's really simple. It's just a loop around the knob and then around the capacitor, and that's that. Sometimes they can get quite elaborate, so it's very good to have that guide. Next, we have voltage data. What this is, it's a, a bottom view of the chassis, and it shows you what voltage you should measure on each pin of the tubes. Very handy when you're troubleshooting a radio. And below that, finally, we have the parts list. Resistors, condensers, also known as capacitors these days, coils and transformers, and then miscellaneous. Miscellaneous you probably won't need, and if, even if you did, you'd never find them, or it'd be very hard to find them. Coils and transformers, hopefully we won't need any of those, because those can also be very difficult to find. Generally, if you need things like knobs or coils or... Um, springs and so on. Easiest place you're going to get one is to cannibalize another radio. There are a few services online. Um, I'll put some links up, like Play Things of the Past, or you can certainly ask online in some of the antique radio forums. Somebody might have uh, a replacement parts that will in the box from the 50s, or they might have a radio they're willing to part out to give you what you need. But for sure, we're going to, need to be replacing some of these capacitors. Resistors, we'll have to measure to see. But uh, in particular, these capacitors, and one down here, the ones that say paper, and the ones that say elect, short for electrolytic, those all got to go. 